Welcome to the Heart Stance and Yoga Heart to Heart series. My name is Leanne Barber, owner and movement creator at Two Heart Stance and Yoga, and it's my pleasure to bring you one of my really good friends today, Heather Swan. Heather is amazing. <laughs> Heather grew up in Southern Maryland where we both became friends. Anyone who knows Heather will tell you that she's so kind and just the brightest spirit in the room. She is a graduate of the Howard University in Washington, D.C. In 2011, she entered the Miss USA pageant and was crowned Miss District of Columbia 2011. She got the opportunity to represent D.C., take the stage in Las Vegas at the nationally televised Miss USA pageant, work with nonprofit organizations to carry out her platform, attend red carpet events in her crown, and experience the opportunity of a lifetime. Heather's got this natural beauty and glow about her that shines from the inside out. She continues to always make a difference no matter what she does. And she would become one of the most wonderful role models as a school teacher. As she continues to be a published model featured in various magazines and publications, as well as featured on QVC, Heather is presently a kindergarten teacher for Baltimore County, Maryland. And I'm so proud of her as a Thank you so much for being here, Heather. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you for giving me a reason to like do my hair. <laughs> it's been a while, it's been a while. Quarantine's been crazy. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here again. Um, just before we get started here, as a school teacher, how has it been adjusting to teaching virtually? Um, it's been an adjustment. Um, I remember in the beginning, it was, it was really scary. Um, well, everything was scary, first off, about like the world just shutting down. Um, and like, so like one of the last things on my mind was honestly like, the teaching part. Um, but then like once we were like, you know, we had our meetings and things like that and they were like, well, we're going to have to we don't know when this is going to end. <laughs> um, so that was an adjustment. And it's like, there's so much that th you're so limited. Well, at first, all you can think about are, are the limitations into like how you can actually reach the children and teach the children. Um, but like now that I've been doing it for so long, um, for so long, that's a couple of months. <laughs> um, I realized that um, it's, it's really not that limited. There's so much that like you can do with them over the computer screen. Um, it's just, you know, you just have to be a student again yourself and like be willing to like learn and figure out things. Um, it's like once, and I think that's so cool about like humans in general, um, that like our ability to adapt to situations is crazy. Like um, when this first started, I, w I panicked and then like, since then, I've just been continuously like looking at ways to get better and better and better and better. And um, I've never been a fan of technology ever. But now I'm forced to become a fan of technology because like that's that's what that's all I have. And I really think that once we do go back into the classroom, um, it's going to make me so much better as like, you know, a practitioner in my field because um, it opened my eyes to so many different things. So, <laughs> And I'm sure your students are so appreciative to see you every day and um, all the creative things that you're doing. I know just knowing you as a person, you're all <laughs> fun and exciting ways to do things. So it's really cool that you're kind of just learning on your feet and just doing the best that you can. That's all you can do, right? <laughs> yes, that's all we can do. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Really cool. Um, tell us a little bit, you know, shifting gears a little bit, tell us a little bit about how it was growing up in Southern Maryland and your own interest as a kid. It, it was awesome because like basically our lives were outside, outdoors. Yeah. So like I went camping this weekend with friends and they were like, Heather, you, you don't know what you're doing. You're not going to be able to survive. And I'm like, yeah. I grew up like outside pretty much. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> right? <laughs> don't let the makeup fool you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really small town so that's an interesting thing it's a very unique experience growing up in a really small town everybody knows everybody um, everybody knows my parents know everybody's parent everybody knows my grandmother like it's hilarious and um, it actually kept me 
like on the straight and narrow because literally everybody knows my mother. So there wasn't much you could get away with. Um, I wouldn't trade it for the world because it definitely shaped me into how I present myself to the world um, nowadays. Like I still in the back of my mind, I kind of have like, you know, you better like, um, you better act right because <laughs> she's going to hear about it. <laughs> she's going to hear about it. <laughs> To share just from knowing you for so long friend, you used to be so shy <laughs> oh my gosh I mean not saying that you're like loud and crazy but yeah. it's crazy to see like the transformation especially you know what being in like the pageant world and everything how it has made you into the person that you are now um, so that's really cool <laughs> well, you know what actually like I tell this to people like all the time um I always say that one of the best compliments and don't you dare start getting emotional okay because i'm not <laughs> one of the best um compliments was like i don't know a couple of years ago you came back to dc um and you and i met up somewhere at a restaurant i'll say restaurant <laughs> and um we were talking and you're like i just want to say that like i had um it's been it had been, it had been years since like i had done the pageant at that point but like you were like since then like noticing all of your growth like, I'm really proud of you. And like, don't you, don't you do it. <laughs> like literally that was like one of the biggest compliments like I could ever receive. Like mm. it, it was, it was awesome because it's like, I ha I guess I had, I had changed a lot. Like, I, but not in a bad way, but it's just, I've become more confident with, I guess, presenting my personality and sharing my personality with others. Thank you. Of course. Um, so you went to Howard University. Mm -hmm. For some students who are looking forward to college and choosing where they want to go, what was your experience like attending a historically black college? Um, it was a it was a very unique experience, a very um, needed experience, I want to say. Uh, so that wasn't the first school I went to. Um, I went to College of Notre Dame um, in Baltimore, Maryland, which is an all-girl Catholic school. It's a very very small school. And I actually enjoyed that experience also. Um, I don't know, like, but I think the reason I decided to go to Howard is because, um, you know, I probably if I trace it back to, you know, growing up in Southern Maryland, um, like the demographic and just like my, my experience um, in the public school system, I wasn't really taught much about like my culture. And I felt like, that was just something that like I was not missing out on, but like that I just wanted to, you know, dive into further. And I wanted to be around people who looked like me um, with similar goals. Because sometimes like, not with everybody, but with some people, you know, in or you have to see it done to like, you know, go after things, you know? and. It's a, it's a lot of um, awesome things that came out of it. Um, friendships, um, networking. It, it was a really good experience. Yeah, I loved it. But what led you ultimately to pursuing your pageant world career? So, um, it's, that's actually a funny story kind of, I guess. Um, well, as a kid and i mean when i say kid i mean like when i was probably four years old or something like that um i think my mom must have been like a big fan of it or at least she was a big fan of like vanessa williams <laughs> um, yeah so in actuality vanessa williams she she did an, another pageant so she was miss america and it's hilarious um and like also blasphemous in the pageant world where you get those two mixed up but i honestly didn't know which one was which back then all i knew is that there was a beautiful girl holding flowers in the middle of the stage. And me and my mom would like get excited to watch the pageant every year when I was little. Um, and like, we honestly, it's funny too, because like we, um, we would get together and watch it like over the years. And I remember specifically, we would always look for Maryland and DC, Maryland and DC. And so um, like now that like, you know, I, we call it our sisterhood. It's funny that like, I look at these people and I'm like, I used to watch you and point you guys out. Like, oh, there's DC, there's Maryland, things like that. It, it was awesome. But to be honest, like, if you ask anybody in middle school, 
in probably elementary school, middle school, high school, if Heather would ever do something like that, it's like, no, what? Because um, it, it was so far from my personality, so far from my personality. Um, my sister, like, she was, like, the more outgoing one, the more social one, the more popular one. In fact, like, uh, I feel like a lot of my, um, you know, early learning experience, like, in public school or whatever, I was kind of in her shadow, like, often, like, you know, like, because she had more of an outgoing personality, so um, the teachers would always be like, you're, um, Crystal's sister. <laughs> so that was kind of my name, <laughs> like, Crystal's sister. Um, and yeah, so like, it was not very likely that I would do something like that because I was just quiet and um, not really girly. I was kind of like a tomboy. Um, I wore my, po my hair in a ponytail until probably 11th grade. <laughs> oh, I wore like hoodies all the time. It just, that, that's just what it was. Um, but then like when I was probably 19 or something like that, um, yeah, but not real 19, they sent, um, so <laughs> they sent like these uh, recruiting packets or something to my sister. <laughs> Yeah, to my sister, um, trying to get her to sign up for the pageant. And I looked at this and I, I was like, she's not going to do this. And so I was like, mom, what do you think? What do you, what do you think if I do that? And my mom was like, what? <laughs> Honestly, she was like so confused of why like, I would want to do something like that because it just wasn't my personality. And um, I think that kind of made me want to do it more because it was like, I felt like, people, there were people who told me, you can do that. You can do that. You have what it takes. It's just like, you really just have to believe in yourself. Um, and that was like, it, I didn't get it on the first try. So like you, you, that was something that I had to keep working at. And yeah. <laughs> I guess if you can tell us a little bit about that, because as you know, with anything, whether you're, um, you know, going into a pageant or you're auditioning for a dance or something like that, you don't always make things on the first try. Um, so can you tell us a little bit, did you, did you, um, you know, go out for another pageant before making Miss Stacy? I did. So um, I competed in Maryland um, and I won like a swimsuit award. Um, I also placed, um, because like the way the pageants are broken down, they have like top 15, top five, things like that. Um, so I made it into like the top 15 and then um, I won like a swimsuit award and they told me, don't stop, don't stop. There were other people. And at first my mom comes up to me and she's like, you okay? <laughs> and I, I mean, I was fine, but like then someone comes over and they're like, you have to do it again. Like you have to do it again. Um, and like that meant a lot to me. So I just decided to like, actually like, study <laughs> study what um you know what the expectations were and um just improve improve like i uh, fitness is a really big part of it and i am i do not love <laughs> i do not love like exercising and, and all that kind of stuff like on a regular basis but like i was so like i was so determined like when i think about my mindset back then it was crazy. Like, I remember like even just going to the gym and being on a treadmill and then like slowing it down and practicing my walk. <laughs> and like, when I say, when I say study it, like I meant like literally study it. Like I, I found my favorites of all time and I was like, oh my God, the way she does her walk. And like, I studied her walk and I noticed how like she was walking in slow motion and somehow she was throwing her hips at the same time. Like, yeah. It was, yeah, so I would practice that, like, walking in slow motion on the treadmill and throwing my hips at the same time. They probably thought I was crazy, but I was determined. <laughs> um, right? Right. <laughs> exactly. So I guess if you want to tell us a little bit more about the process of getting there, um, mm -hmm. like, did you have a coach? Did you have um, someone kind of training you in those areas to get better and improve? So, um, literally when I first started, I knew nothing. Like my first pageant, I knew nothing. Um, so I just jumped in and, um, you know, after like get putting my feet in it or whatever and like 
getting to know other people in it. Um, so yes, they suggested get a coach, get a coach, get a coach. But like, um, okay, so something about me that I'm always working on, always working on still to this day is, um, you know, finding the importance of reaching out and asking questions. Like, I don't know why that is something that is so difficult for me. I think it, it comes from like me being shy, me not wanting to bother other people. Um, but like, I, I was just too scared to ask people for help. I really was, I really was. So um, that's why I just, I YouTube a lot. And this was before YouTube tutorials were a thing, <laughs> but I studied. And then like, um, I actually did Miss America DC, um, which is not the one that I ended up ultimately winning, but Miss America pageant is a lot different from the Miss USA pageant as far as like, you know, what they score on and things like that. They are really, really heavy on interviews. And like, to tell you the truth, like interview was probably my weakest point. Like I had worked out to the point where my body was like so toned. I was fit, fit, fit. <laughs> um, and then I could get the best dress ever. Like, you know, like I could find the best dress on the shelf if I wanted to. But like that whole like interview is like, that was my, that was just my, definitely my weakness at that point. Because like here again, I'm so shy. Like I really am shy. Um, and so I, I hate it. I hate it <laughs> going to mock interviews. So yeah. Jerry Galvez, um, Trisha Lloyd, Sonia Gavanker, I got to shout them out. I really do because um, there are a lot of the reasons why I, I won Miss DC USA because like they actually believed in me and they didn't charge me a single thing. They just sent me to um, all these mock interviews. And I was like, oh God, I don't want to go. Oh God, I don't want to go. <laughs> but like, and then I remember like the first time I did one of the mock interviews, um, there was a girl who was like 5'10", going in before me. Um, and she played the, I think she played the violin. And she graduated from Harvard. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, like I have to follow her in the interview? Like why couldn't I go before her? But like everything happens for a reason because like I was able to like sit in the back and kind of listen a little bit to, um, you know, like their constructive criticism. And what they said to her was that like, you know, you're, you're beautiful, you're, you're clearly very, very smart, but we feel like you're trying to teach us something. And you know, like, like you're, the way you are talking to us, it's kind of like, you know, like she, that's something that she needed to end up tweaking ultimately. Um, and so I thought about it and I was like, well, that's, maybe that's what they like about me is that like, I'm, I go out there and I'm just completely myself, like, <laughs> whether my answers are what they want to hear or not, like it's the way I'm talking to them that like they really feel like, I, I think they were able to see that like a genuine person and like a caring person and I'm able to have a bubbly conversation with them. And it took me a while to realize that because it's like you're looking at the other people competing and you're thinking, well, she won, I need to be like her. She won, I should be like her because she won, right? But that's not why she won. She won because she was being herself. And like she was confident and comfortable in being herself. So once I, I figured out like what worked for me and why people wanted to ask me questions or why people wanted to come up to me, I realized like what my strengths were. And then I just started like being more confident in my own personality, in my own skin. It's like, like I may not be this person, I may not be that person, but I'm me and I have a lot to offer the world. Just by being me. <laughs> That's awesome. And thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's interesting just to learn, you know, your process and going through it. And it sounds like you taught yourself a lot of things, kind of looking, you know, back at it. Yeah. Making sure that you're kind of following people that you uh, inspire mm -hmm. or and, you know, just being yourself. That's what's always so important. So, yeah, thank you for sharing. With a lot of emphasis being placed on body image and appearance in the past um, through the pageants. And the choice of some of the recent pageants taking away the bikini section and um, kind of becoming more inclusive to all bodies. 
Um, do you think the desired image of a pageant girl is changing to keep up with the times or how do you feel that things are changing right now? I think that like it, definitely to keep up with the times because like if you look at it, I remember when I first like ventured into like the pageant slash modeling world, like when did you see a 5'7 model? Like you didn't, like honestly, it was, everybody was like 5'10 and up. I remember there was one year that the top model series um, they like, they brought it the, um, the height requirement down. Um, and like, that was huge because it was like, that's not something that they look for at all. Like beauty for the longest time was like categorized as like just one thing. Like you had to fit into literally a box or a mold. And in all honesty, some of the most beautiful people like have emerged since then. Like, and people like recognize that like, wow, that person is beautiful and not only that they're super marketable because not a lot of people are 5'10 and like you know whatever so um i think it's actually an awesome thing and it's really important to keep up with the times because nowadays we don't even necessarily look at beauty or recognize beauty in the same things that we saw before i mean they're still beautiful believe me they they still are beautiful but like they're not the only beautiful thing anymore. And like a lot of the other um, looks are a lot more marketable, a lot more marketable. Absolutely, I'm just a lot more relatable now. It's like yes. you're seeing people of all different races, you're seeing people of all different shapes and sizes. And it's like, mm -hmm. lets people know that like, hey, maybe I can actually do this because I'm not, you know, I'm not five nine, I'm not super skinny, but. Exactly this look and I can still you know, make it because now you know on the front of like SI and all these big magazines yeah. you're seeing plus size models you're seeing people with black and brown skin you're seeing people you know transgender Here? yeah there's no don't let me even get into that <laughs> there you cannot see curly hair which is crazy um you know just, uh, um, I can almost pinpoint like when that changed in the pageant world because I remember my year um like obviously they, my mom has always been big on like straighten your hair, straighten your hair, but that's kind of like, that's what, that's the environment she grew up in. Like, you know, they were all about straightening your hair, straightening your hair. She to this day has no idea if her hair actually curls or not. She has no idea. Right, exactly. Um, so um, yeah, I remember like my um, mentors or whatever, they were saying, you know, like one of them, I love her to death, I love her to death. But like she said, you know, I, I, I came to like an event. I showed up to an event with my hair curly. She was like, this looks fun. It looks fun, but make sure it looks a lot more polished when you straighten it. I mean, like, I guess they didn't realize that, like, that that's a negative thing to say to someone. But in all honesty, if you think about, like, me before that, my hair was strictly curly. Like, that was all the time. Like, literally, we had friends that called me, called you smiley and called me curly. <laughs> so, um yeah like that was crazy um but i was i was so used to people saying that like my mom is a person who says that also you know um it looks more neat that way like you know she, she doesn't want it in wild which is crazy because like you straighten my hair and then you change my person not really change my personality but it's like it's not at that point in my life that wasn't authentically me then you know like i probably would have been a lot more comfortable if i were able to you know, go out there in my curls or something like that, you know, like wild and stuff like that. That would have been, I would have been all for it. <laughs> um, but in the process, me straightening my hair all the time, damaged my curls. Like I have literally, it's almost like, you know, the Odyssey, <laughs> how he has to like take, he took a long time to get back to where he was. <laughs> That's how I feel like I am. I'm like taking a very long time to get back to my curls. And finally, I feel like this summer they're kind of like back to normal, but they'll, it's like they'll never be the same. Um, all that heat and putting in like weaves and this and this and all this kind of stuff. Like, it's okay. but a, a changing point for that. Um, my friend uh, Kyra, who was Miss DC 2016, 2017, sorry, 2017, I think, um, she ended up winning Miss USA. And I remember when she was going out for Miss DC, I was telling her, like, I had seen her do it, like, the year before, and then we became friends, and then, like, I pulled her, and I was like, look, 
like I've seen you on stage and all that kind of stuff, but like you in person are like beautiful, like with minimal makeup because she never wears makeup, which is hilarious actually. She never wears makeup ever. Um, and like her hair just curly. And I was like, please, please wear your hair curly or just, just think about it. And I, I told her that because I knew that like she is so stunning that like she could literally do that and people are just going to adjust to it, you know? So um, that's basically what happened. <laughs> and I told her like, you know, wear, don't go in there wearing like super cake makeup because people realize that that's what everybody's doing. Like, I want to see your face and I want to see your dimples. Make sure you flash the dimples and I want your hair curly because like that's my favorite. Yeah. And she won Miss USA. I remember. I, yeah. yeah, I also told her um, that like <laughs> to find what her like what was unique about her and something unique about her was also how nerdy she is mm -hmm. like in the sciences. Like yep. that's really unique because a lot of people go into like pageants because they their end game is isn't the pageant. Their end game is thinking about like well, I want this to lead to modeling. I want this to lead to whatever else. Um, so it's really refreshing when you find a girl who's like nerdy and awkward, but still like really beautiful and like relatable because she is nerdy and awkward. <laughs> so yeah, like, yeah. I, and after that, like I've seen so many girls like just proudly go out with curls. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm really good to see. And, and mm -hmm like just rooting so hard for her <laughs> like all the curly hair girls are like yes she yeah won. curly hair <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> anyone else you would have straightened it or someone would have told you to straighten your hair and it's like no she looks beautiful and her curls are big and wild and beautiful like I'm exactly <laughs> exactly like so happy she like decided to be herself <laughs> <laughs> Um, so in that light, what would you say to anyone who's looking to get into the pageant circuit? Any tips for aspiring Miss USA, uh, Miss USA pageant candidates in particular? Absolutely. Um, I want to say like, one, do your research. I did my research. I, um, because also like that comes up in the interviews. So, um, you know, just know a little something, something about like the place you're representing and like the people who have represented it, you know, just, um, and then also know yourself. Like, I know that's like almost impossible to do, but like, if you don't know yourself completely, cause I still don't like, at least be like thinking about yourself and think about like, they always ask this in, um, pageant questions. Like what is your greatest strength? What is your weakness? Like a lot of times those questions will like throw people off, but know those because it's really important because that's what's going to set you apart from anyone else like and the last thing you want to do is go in there looking and being like the next girl just figure out how you can stand apart from the next girl and um funny thing is is that like that is actually a skill a very very important skill that like i have taken with me in life like in any room that i walk into or any um interview for a job like i'm constantly in the back of my mind thinking about like okay i have to think about how i'm going to set myself apart from the other candidates you know and it's it's not a physical thing at all a lot of times it's like oh what is my skill set things like that but just know how to market yourself really important <laughs> Very good. Very good advice. Thank you for sharing that. What led you to becoming a teacher? So, um, funny thing about that is my sister's a teacher. Um, and I think that is originally why I did not immediately go into teaching. But um, if I looking back at like some of my pageant interview notes, <laughs> they asked like, what is your dream job or your dream career? And I said that I wanted to open a chain of early childhood <laughs> learning centers. And like, it's, it's just hilarious to me that like, even though like I had forgotten that I wrote that down, like I've been practicing that, like and making my way to that, like since then, um, it just makes me happy. Like not everyone like goes into a pageant or something like that, thinking that like they want to be a model or they want this or they want that. Like 
I think for me, it was more about like personal development. It really doesn't feel like I'm working that much. <laughs> when you find like what you really love to do, like it doesn't feel like that much work. <laughs> Absolutely. So my last question for you, Heather, is how do you keep pushing forward? What are the things that inspire you to keep going? I have a really good um, support system. Um, I have awesome friends that I can definitely count on. And my mother is just someone who I always know is going to be in my um, corner no matter what. Um, it's like I, I never have to doubt that. I always know that. Um, and that, that's so important to have, I think. And outside of that, I think, you know, your inner peace and always um, keeping in mind that like you can't control like what goes on in the world or what goes on around you. The only thing that you can control is your own happiness and your own peace. Um, once you figure that out, like the world is in life just gets so much better. <laughs> it's much more manageable. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And thank you. You always inspire me to, you know, find the light in things. And I think hopefully that's the reason why we've become such good friends over all of these years. Um, because we both kind of try to find, you know, those beautiful moments, even in chaotic times. Um, <laughs> so thank you for that. And um, just really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and, um, you know, inspiring my students, uh, anyone who's looking to kind of go into the pageant world, but also just, you know, being such a bright person that you are and a teacher and just being amazing. So thank you so much. On behalf of Two Hearts Dance and Yoga, it is my pleasure to have you here. And um, can you tell us where people can learn more about you or maybe um, follow you on Instagram? Sure. Um, you can follow me at Heather Feather. <laughs> so it's Heather Feather um, with four R's at the end. <laughs> Yes, awesome, very cool. And Heather, we just look forward to seeing wonderful more things coming from you as always. And thank you so much for continuing to teach our children <laughs> the future of <laughs> everything here. Um, so we appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be talking to you soon. <laughs>